How would you like to do church like Jesus did? Over the past few years, we've learned that church can happen in a very meaningful way outside of a church building. In fact, we're getting raving reviews from our house churches, which are now over 100. Though I thank God for churches in buildings and on campuses, God is leading more and more people these days to gather for church in their homes. Not only is it easier for many people to attend a house church, but a house church can offer a level of community that campuses can't. Well, I'm excited to announce that every Thursday in December and January, I plan to host a house church interest meeting on Zoom at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. If you're not attending a church right now and are interested, or if you know of anyone who's interested, then all they have to do is email us at hcinfo at solidlives.com or click the link in the description of this video. Okay, now let me welcome you to the New Testament Daily with Jerry Dearman, where we read and talk through a chapter of the New Testament every day. I'm glad you're here because reading God's Word daily will change your life. I'd appreciate it if you'd help others find this resource by sharing the link, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, now let's pray, and we'll jump into God's Word. Father, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you that it's inspired. I pray that each person watching or listening today will hear what you have to say to them through your Word. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, here we go. Chapter 14, here's what it says. Now it happened as he, Jesus, went into the house of, the, of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath, that they watched him closely. And behold, there was a certain man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus, answering, spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? They knew that he knew that they were going to question this if it was on the Sabbath because they're all about religion and the law instead of about the point of the whole matter and the law. So he asked them, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they kept silent. And he took him and healed him and let him go. Then he answered them saying, which of you having a donkey or an ox that has fallen into a pit will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him regarding these things. In other words, if you'll do that for your animal, why would you not do that for a human being who is in covenant with God, by the way, which all these Jews, including the sick man, was. All these Jews uh, were. Okay, verse 7. So he told a parable to those who were invited when he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, when you were invited by anyone to a wedding feast, uh, to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more honorable than you be invited by him. And he who invited you and him come and say to you, give place to this man. And then you begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when he who invited you comes, he may say to you, friend, go up higher. Then you will have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he also said to him who invited him, when you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, oh boy, this is the heart of the Lord, and may this sink down into our hearts. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Oh, may we take note, Lord, do that work in our hearts in Jesus' name, that we don't always bless people that can bless us back or make us feel good about ourselves. Verse 15, now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he, Jesus, said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. 
The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. I just love that one. The other said, I ask you to have me excused. This man said, I married a wife, and so I can't come. <laughs> and of course, we know it. it's not because he's saying he's not allowed, but nonetheless, it sounds funny. Verse 21, so that servant came and reported these things to his master, then the master of the house being angry. In other words, he's angry because people were invited to this great dinner. And they're all making excuses. In other words, it's just not that important to them. They've got other things that are more important to them. So the master of the house, and of course this represents God, being angry, said to a servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, master, it is done as you commanded and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and hedges. Notice, Go to another place, go to another part of the city, go to another neighborhood, go to another people group, go to people that speak a different language. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. I believe this applies to churches. I believe this applies to our ministries that my house may be filled. God wants us to maximize every asset that he's given us to reach people for the kingdom of God. Verse 24, for I say to you that none of those who were invited shall taste my supper. And that supper is talking about salvation. Verse 25, now great multitudes went with him and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, he's saying this to shock them and to get them to assess their priorities. Who and what is the most important to you? Is Jesus, is God most important to you? Or do you have other people and things that take priority over God? He said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. He's saying nobody in your life, not even your closest relatives and even yourself can come before God. If you're going to receive salvation and serve God, then he must be number one. Well, of course, he created all things. He created us. But that doesn't mean that we always live like that and choose like that. Verse 27, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be, be my disciple bearing his cross, talking about willing to die, not necessarily physically die, though that could be the case in some situations, but dying to ourselves, dying to what our flesh is telling us to do, to what our desires are telling us to do, as opposed to what God has told us to do. Uh, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You have to do it like me if you're going to be a disciple, because a disciple is a lookalike. Verse 28, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish it, or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Oh, this is so important. Whoever of you does not forsake all all that he has cannot be my disciple. There can be nothing in the way, nothing that preempts, nothing that takes precedent, priority over Jesus. Jesus must be number one. Whatever he says to do, we do it. And we attend to him. We're attentive to him. So likewise, verse 30. Eight. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, well, Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth, right? But notice, salt can lose its flavor. We can be the salt of the earth at one season of our lives 
and become flavorless, become non-distinct from the world. He said, but if salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has an ear, let him hear. Jesus is uh, being very clear in his language here that you can lose your saltiness. You can lose your edge of serving God and not be worth anything to God or the kingdom of God. We can actually lose our salvation. A lot of people think we can't. Now, it's not like you have salvation, you're walking down the road and say, I lost my salvation. No. But through lifestyle and choices and disregarding, uh, not prioritizing the Lord Jesus and his purpose for our lives, we can lose that something that we had when we first gave our lives to the Lord and we're serving him passionately. And Jesus is saying, look, all of a sudden your, your status has changed. But it's not because God has just changed his view of you. It's because you have not stuck with Jesus as your Lord and serving him like you're supposed to. And so obviously your value has gone down, certainly uh, as being useful for ministry. But we also know from many other passages that there are people who were saved, gave their lives to Jesus, but then they fell off. They got distracted and they became more like the world and maybe didn't even realize that they actually lost their salvation. Their real, Jesus is no longer their Lord. And uh, like he said in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. We must be pursuing the will of God in our lives. Friend, I pray that you do that in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow for chapter 15.